Here I'm going to demonstrate how to record a notes payable and that's a liability on the balance sheet and this notes payable has one payment out here at the end of the fourth year. So we invested in something here in the beginning of the first year and we're going to pay for it at the end of the fourth year. And then associated with that, uh, of course, there's a, we're going to look at a discount here to the notes payable and then the notes payable expense account here, which is part of net income on the income statement. And we're going to determine the present value at the be beginning of year one and then the interest expense that has to be recorded for each of those four years. And that interest expense here will be um, based on what <coughs> the future value of that notes payable is at the end of the fourth year minus its present value and then we get a value here that has to be allocated to the interest expense. So let's go and look at the mechanics of uh, deriving that interest expense for each year. All right. Here we have to determine the interest expense for each of the next four years. And to do that, we have to know what the present value of that notes payable is, and we have to know the interest rate. So let's go up here and look at our cash flow diagram. All right. We know the uh, future value of our payment at the end of the fourth year. Now, we have to discount that back at the interest rate uh, charged in that notes payable to its present value. That would be what it's worth here at the beginning of year one. Okay, we do that either through using your present value function on your calculator or the Excel function. Now, if we didn't know what the interest rate was in that notes payable, but we did know what it, our, what we purchased here at the beginning of year one, what its value would be, uh, today's value, and then we know what our payment is here at the end of the fourth year, we could uh, put those two, uh, both put the present value and the future value in here into internal rate of return function either in your calculator or Excel to determine what the interest rate is. So in either case here we start out with a present value or a beginning balance here of $2732 and then we take our interest rate time that's, times that beginning balance and we get an interest expense for the first year. Now we add that interest expense to our beginning balance and then we would subtract any payment we have well it made and in this case we didn't make any so we end up with our ending balance here in year one. So the ending balance of year one becomes the beginning balance of year two. Now you take that times the interest rate and you get your interest expense for the year. Add your interest expense to your beginning balance and that would be your ending balance here. So you do the same for years three and four. But here if we look at year four, we have our beginning balance times our interest rate gives us our interest expense. And then you add those two together and you got a, a balance here of $4,000. But then at the end of the uh, last year, we paid out $4,000 on the notes payable. So our ending balance would be zero. Right. Let's look at our journal entries here for uh, uh, notes payable where we have a lump sum payment at the end of the uh, term. So here notes payable was a liability on the balance sheet. So in the beginning of year one we increased notes payable by in this case $4,000. So at the end of the fourth year we paid off the notes payable and then we would credit cash here or reduce cash by $4,000 for the payment. So. The associated expense account here for notes payable would be at the beginning of year one. We had its, we discounted a notes payable back here to its present value of 2732, recorded that. And in each year we had an interest expense on that notes payable. So we recorded that. And then if you look here, when you add your interest expense to its present value, we come up with a $4,000 expense in notes payable. So that balances our notes payable. Now if we go back here and look at our discount here to notes payable which is a, a contra account to notes payable. Uh, first off how it's calculated here is in year one we had our 
future, val future payment here of $4,000 less its present value. And that was the discount amount. And what that is here is if you look here, we have a notes payable credit here, 4000 in year one, and then the debit entry was 2732 uh, for the present value. And then the, the other debit balance here to balance it was $1,268. So each of the um, years we had this interest expense, which we reduced our discount to notes payable by. And at the end of the fourth year, we'd have a zero amount here in our discounts and notes payable. And then this interest expense each year gets charged to our uh, notes payable expense. So that's where we make our balancing entry here for our discount. So what we're looking at here in summary, we had a $4,000 payment out here at the end of the fourth year. We discounted that back to its present value, in this case $2,732. And then we subtracted those two amounts here to come up with an interest expense that we'd have on that notes payable. And then we allocated that interest expense on the expense account here and then we the balancing entries here would be to the discount on notes payable. All right. So that's a summary here of uh, how we'd handle notes payable with a lump sum payment.